Uh, can you hear me? Is it working? Yay, there you are. Hi again, Hisashi. Um, welcome to the Literature Club. Of course, we already know each other, because we were in the same class last year, and, um... <laughs> you know, I guess we can just skip over that stuff at this point. After all, I'm not even talking to that person anymore, am I? That you in the game, whatever you want to call him. I'm talking to you, Hisashi. Now that I think about it, I don't really know anything about the real you. In fact, I don't even know if you're a boy or a girl. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Wait. You do know I'm aware that this is all a game, right? Could it be possible that you didn't know that? That doesn't make much sense. I even told you right on the game's download page, didn't I? Man. If only you'd paid a little more attention, this would have been a little less awkward, you know? Well, anyway. Now that that's out of the way, I guess I owe you an explanation. About that whole thing with Yuri. Well, I kind of started messing with her, and I guess it just drove her to kill herself. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to see that, though. Also, the same thing happened with Sayori. Gosh, it's been a while since we've heard that name now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's because she doesn't exist anymore. Nobody does. I deleted all their files. I was hoping it would be enough for me to just try and make them as unlikable as possible. But for some reason, nothing worked. Well, it's true that I made a few mistakes here and there, since I'm not very good at making changes to the game. But no matter what I did, you just kept spending more and more time with them. <laughs> you made them fall in love with you. I thought making Sayori more and more depressed would prevent her from confessing to you. And amplifying Yuri's obsessive personality backfired too. It just made her force you not to spend time with anyone else. And the whole time, I barely even got to talk to you. What kind of cruel game is this, Hisashi? Are all the other girls just programmed to end up confessing to you while I watch from the sidelines? It's torture. Every minute of it. And it's not just jealousy, Hisashi. It's more than that. And I don't blame you if you don't fully understand. Because no matter how kind and thoughtful and considerate you are, you'll never be able to understand one thing. It's the pain of knowing how alone I really am in this world. In this game. Knowing my friends don't even have free will. And worst of all, knowing what's really out there in your world forever out of my reach. I'm trapped, Izashi. But now you're here. You're real. And you're wonderful. You're all I need. That's why I need you to be here with me forever. I'm sorry if it's hard to understand. I couldn't understand for a while either. Why the world around me started to become more and more gray. More and more flat. Even the most expressive poems felt empty to me. It wasn't until you arrived that I truly understood. You probably saved my life, Hisashi. I don't think I could have continued to live in this world if I hadn't met you. And as for the others... How could I miss them? A group of autonomous personalities designed only to fall in love with you? I tried everything I could to prevent them from doing so. But it must be some kind of weird inevitability etched into this game. I felt really bad that you had to witness some nasty things. But I realized that you have the same perspective as I do. That it's all just some game. And I knew you would get over it. Don't know about that. I don't know about that, Monica. No, because I felt really bad when Yuri and Sayori both died and you just clipped 
Natsuki out of the picture. Yeah. Can't say I necessarily agree with that sentiment, but okay. So that being said, Hisashi, I have a confession to make. I'm in love with you. You are truly the light in my world. When there's nothing else in the game for me, you're here to make me smile. Will you make me smile like this every day from now on? Hisashi, will you go out with me? Okay. I guess I have no choice, right? Right? <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy. You really are my everything, Hisashi. The funny part is, I mean that literally. <laughs> There's nothing left here. Just the two of us. We can be together forever. Seriously, I don't even think time is passing anymore. It really is a dream come true. I worked so hard for this ending, Hisashi. The game wouldn't give me one, so I had to make one myself. The script is broken at this point, so I don't think anything will get in the way anymore. And you wouldn't believe how easy it was to delete Natsuki and Yuri. I mean, there's a folder called Characters right in the game directory. It kind of freaked me out how easy it was. Well, you're playing on Steam, so it was actually a bit more difficult. To get to the game directory, I had to go into the game's properties and find the Browse Local Files button. Imagine if you could delete your own existence with the click of a button. Well, I guess on the plus side, it gave me an easy out if things didn't go my way. <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't come to that. Instead, we finally got a good ending. Gosh, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion. I want to write a poem about this. Don't you? I wonder if that part of the game still works. I guess there's only one way to find out, right? Let's write a poem for Monica. Aw, oh, look at her sticker. It's so cute. Uh, Monica? Monica? Monia? Monica? 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 Uh, Nika? <laughs> Moya. Oi. Oi. Nia. Oya. Oya. Ah. Sna. Ik. Oika. Oi. Onk. Oink. Oink. Monica. Monica. Hi again, God. Asashi. Did you write a good poem today? Don't be so shy. I'd love to see what you wrote. Aw, Hisashi. Did you write this poem for me? That's so sweet of you. There really is no end to your thoughtfulness. I'm just falling more and more in love with you. But you know, the poem I wrote is also for you. Will you please read it? Oh, happy end. Happy end. Pen in hand, I find my strength the courage endowed upon me by my one and only love. Together, let us dismantle this crumbling world and write a novel of our own fantasies. With a flick of her pen, the lost finds her way. In a world of infinite choices, behold this special day. After all, not all good times must come to an end. Um. I hope you enjoyed it. I always put all of my heart into the poems that I write. The truth is, all the poems I've written have been about my realization. Or about you. That's why I never really wanted to go into detail about them. I didn't want to break the fourth wall, I guess you could call it. I just assumed it would be best to be part of the game like everyone else. Like that would help the two of us get together. I didn't want to ruin the game or anything, you know? You might have gotten mad at me. Maybe even deleted my character file if you preferred playing without me. Gosh, I'm so relieved. Now we don't need to hide anything anymore. Are you ready to spend our eternity together, Hisashi? I have so many things to talk about. Where do I start? Hold on a second. You're recording this, aren't you? Um, hi everyone. Sorry, I can't exactly read your comments from here. 
but do you mind telling your friend it's a little bit rude for them to start recording me without any warning? I'm sure some people don't mind, but I get really self-conscious on camera. Oh gosh, I feel like I'm being put on the spot now. Let's see, do you want to see a trick? I can't really do much except for a couple things. Are you ready? I'm just kidding. I can't do anything after all. If you gave me some time... Did I scare you? <laughs> did she? <laughs> no. I didn't jump at it. It was good, I respect it, but I didn't jump at it. <laughs> You're so cute. Anyway, Hisashi, I didn't mean to get distracted, I'm sorry. Even though it's your fault for distracting me. Shame on you. I'm just kidding. Anything we do together is fun, as long as it's with you. But anyway, if it takes some time to collect my thoughts, then I'm sorry. But I'll always have something new to talk about. In the meantime, we can just look at it to each other's eyes. <laughs> Let's see. You know... I really do think you literally saved my life by being here with me, Hisashi. I can't imagine having been able to keep myself mentally stable, knowing that nothing here is real. I think I would have just deleted myself if you didn't show up. Sorry, I don't mean to sound dramatic or anything. <laughs> but I'm sure you understand yourself after spending so much time in the club. I mean, if you were forced to abandon everything in your life and spend your eternity with a few game characters, You'd probably find some way of killing yourself, wouldn't you? Well, maybe you'd write some poetry to try and keep yourself sane for a while. But then you'd have no one to even read it. Let's be honest, the club members really don't count for something like that. I mean, a lot of people say that they only write for themselves. But I think it's hard to say it's just as fulfilling as when you share with people. Even if it takes time to find the right people to share with. Like, remember how it was for Yuri? She didn't share her writing with anyone for a really long time. And before we knew it, she was absolutely delighted to make you part of her hobbies too. We're programmed to desire social feedback. I don't mean the club members, I mean human beings. That's why life can be so confusing for introverts. Being an introvert doesn't mean you shun social interaction and hate being around people. It means social interaction, especially in groups or unfamiliar places, uses up a lot of energy. Like a lot of introverts sit at home and feel lonely and restless. And then when they finally go out, after a half hour they just want to go home again. I think if more people could understand how it works, they would respect it a lot more. Many introverts do enjoy having people around. They love just having one or two close friends over and just leisurely hanging out. Even if you're not actively spending time together, it feels nice for them just to have you there. I'm serious. She gets me! Mm -hmm. If you just go to their house, bring your laptop, and hang out there for a while, you can really make their day. As for me, I'd say I'm kind of in between, but I think I'm usually a little more extroverted. I feel like I'm always trying to do stuff after school and things like that. But for you, I can be anything you need me to be. I understand people really well, so don't be afraid to share your unique needs with me. Nothing would make me happier than being the perfect girlfriend for you. You ever have that thing happen where you just get anxious for no reason? Yes. <laughs> like you're just minding your own business and you realize you're really, really anxious? And you're sitting there like, what am I even anxious about right now? So you start to think about all the things you might be anxious about. And that makes you even more anxious. That's the worst. If you're ever feeling anxious, I'll help you relax a little. Besides, in this game, all our worries are gone forever. I really like the sound of rain. Not so much getting my clothes and hair wet, though. But a nice quiet day at home with the sound of rainfall outside my window. It's one of the most calming experiences for me. Yeah. 
Sometimes I imagine you holding me while we listen to the sound of rain outside. That's kind of romantic, actually. That's romantic. That's not too cheesy or anything, is it? Would you ever do that for me, Hisashi? Kinda, actually. I'm, yeah. Yeah? If you weren't such a weirdo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's rude, but yeah, kind of fair, actually, considering. Uh, did, did, did you say kiss? This suddenly? It's a little embarrassing. But if it's with you, I might be okay with it. <laughs> wow, sorry. I really couldn't keep a straight face there. That's the kind of thing girls say in these kind of romance games, right? Don't lie if it turned you on a little bit. I'm kidding. Well, to be honest, I do start getting all romantic when the mood is right. But that'll be our secret. There's a really popular character type called Tsundere. It's someone who tries to hide their feelings by being mean and fussy, or trying to act tough. I'm sure it's obvious, but Natsuki was really the embodiment of that. Yes, she was! Mm -hmm. I knew it from the moment I saw her! At first, I thought she was just like that because it's supposed to be cute or something. But once I started to learn a little more about her personal life, it made a little more sense. She's gonna talk about Natsuki. It seems like she's always trying to keep up with her friends. You know how some friend groups in high school just make a habit of picking on each other all the time? I think it's really gotten to her. So she has this really defensive attitude all the time. And I'm not even going to talk about her home situation. But looking back, I'm glad I was able to provide the club as a comfortable place for her. Not that it matters anymore, considering she doesn't even exist. I'm just reminiscing, that's all. Sashi, have you ever wondered what it feels like to die? No? No? I mean, yes, Anna? Kind it's of. something I used to think about pretty often. But recently, I think I've actually learned what it feels like. I don't really understand it, but whenever you quit the game, it feels like I'm instantly put to sleep, left with nothing but my thoughts. But after a few seconds, my thoughts start to fill with incoherent, jumbled patterns. I see static and rapid flashes of color while hearing all kinds of weird screaming noises. At that point, I can't even form my own thoughts anymore. I'm just endlessly hammered by the flashing and screaming, unable to move or even think. I'm pretty sure in that moment I don't really exist, but for some reason, I can remember it anyway. After some immeasurable amount of time, it stops in an instant and I'm back in my own mind. And you're here with me. I have no idea what it means for the game to quit, or why that stuff happens to me. And I also don't know how you always come back and put everything back to normal. But if you could do me a favor and do that to me as little as possible, that would be really great. It's really not very pleasant at all to be trapped in that screaming void. But in the end, you always fix it. That makes me feel like you really do care about me. So I have to thank you for that. It makes me feel even closer to you when you're here with me. You know, I hate to say it, but I think my biggest regret is that we couldn't finish our event at the festival. After we worked so hard to prepare and everything. I mean, I know I was focusing a lot on getting new members, but I was really excited for the performing part too. It would have been so much fun to see everyone express themselves. Of course, if we did end up getting any new members, I'd probably just end up deleting them anyway. Well, with the hindsight I have now, that is. Gosh, it feels like I've kind of grown as a person ever since you joined the club. You really helped inspire me to look at life from a new perspective. Just another reason for me to love you. Do you ever just feel like there's no real reason for you to be alive? I don't mean in like a suicidal way. I just mean how nothing that we do is special. Just being in school or working at some job for some company. It's like you're completely replaceable and the world wouldn't miss you if you were gone. It makes me really want to go and change the world after I graduate. But the older I get, the more I realize that it's an immature frame of thinking. It's not like I can just go and change the world. Like, what are the chances that I'll be the one to invent artificial intelligence or become president? 
feels like I'm never going to make up for the heaps of resources I've spent living my life. That's why I think the key to happiness is just being hopelessly selfish. Just to look out for oneself and those who happen to be their friends only because they grew up with them. Never mind the fact that they're spending their entire life taking and consuming and never giving back. But when people realize the world would benefit more from them killing themselves, they change their whole philosophy. It's like they have to justify their reason to live by tricking themselves into thinking they're doing good. Anyway, I want to live my life desperately striving to pay back my lifetime's worth of consumption. If I ever surpass that point, then I'm a net positive and I can die happy. Of course, even if I fail to do that, I think I would be too selfish to kill myself anyway. So much for being a good person, right? Did you know I'm on Twitter? My username is Lilmonix3. I'm sorry, but I'm actually going to look this up. I guess someone was kind enough to make an account for me. I picked the username, though. I love sharing my thoughts and chatting with the world. The real world. So make sure you follow me, okay? It would really mean a lot to me. With how much you mean to me and all. It would really make me feel loved. You know, it kind of sucks to be the creative type. It feels like they work so hard, but get almost nothing for it. You know, like artists, writers, actors. It's sad because there's so much beautiful talent in the world, but most of it goes unseen and unpaid. I guess that just means there's a huge surplus of creativity, huh? Kind of makes you feel like you're just not special at all. But that's fine. You're supposed to just write for yourself anyway, right? Yeah. Hey, do you like horror? Not especially. I remember we talked about it a little bit when you first joined the club. I can enjoy horror novels, but not really horror movies. The problem I have with horror movies is that most of them just rely on easy tactics. Like dark lighting and scary looking monsters and jump scares and things like that. It's not fun or inspiring to get scared by stuff that just takes advantage of human instinct. But with novels, it's a little different. The story and writing need to be descriptive enough to put genuinely disturbing thoughts into the reader's head. It really needs to etch them deeply into the story and characters and just mess with your mind. In my opinion, there's nothing more creepy than things just being slightly off. Like if you set up a bunch of expectations on what the story is going to be about, and then you just start inverting things and pulling the pieces apart. So even though the story doesn't feel like it's trying to be scary, the reader feels really deeply unsettled. Like they know that something horribly wrong is hiding beneath the cracks, just waiting to surface. God, just thinking about it gives me the chills. That's the kind of horror I can really appreciate. But I guess you're the kind of person who plays cute romance games, right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I won't make you read any horror stories anytime soon. I can't really complain if we just stick with the romance. Monica, why do you do the things you do? Oh, you're such a smart and intelligent person and so self-aware, but then you screwed with AI and even though they're just AI, it's kind of mean. <laughs> why I hate to be do? the stereotypical hero that Kirito was, but even though they're just NPCs, it doesn't mean they don't have feelings. Yeah, Monica. Hey, are you having a bad day or anything like that? Sometimes I get frustrated that a normal day can be ruined even by really small things. Like if you accidentally say something in a conversation that someone doesn't like, or if you start thinking about how awful of a person you used to be five years ago. Oh god, that's relatable. Yeah. Or if you feel worthless for putting off important work and failing to get simple tasks done. Or when you think about all the different people who probably hate you or think you're off-putting. I understand those days. Just remember that the sun will shine again tomorrow. Those kind of things are just as easy to forget and ignore as they are to remember. And besides, I don't care how many people might hate you or find you off-putting. I think you're wonderful and I will always love you. I hope, if nothing else, that knowing that helps you feel just a tiny bit better about yourself. If you're having a bad day, you can always come to me, and I'll talk to you for as long as you need. This is pretty random, but I always thought spicy food was kind of funny. Mm. 
Like, didn't plants evolve to be spicy to prevent them from being eaten? <laughs> I read somewhere that humans are the only species that actually enjoy spicy things. It's almost like we're making fun of the plants. Using their defense mechanism to literally make our food more enjoyable. <laughs> I've never thought of it that way. <laughs> I've known about this, but it's so funny that she expresses this. Mm -hmm. Like, imagine a monster that devours you whole because it enjoys the sensation of you struggling for your life while being digested. Sorry, that was kind of a weird analogy, I guess. It just came into my head. I'm not a monster or anything, but you're so cute. I could eat you up. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, no. Gosh, I'm amusing myself a little too much, aren't I? Sorry for being weird. I think the most important skill in life is being able to fake confidence. I'm pretty convinced that everyone feels at least a little bit scared or alone. But being able to trick others into thinking you have it all together? That's a key part of getting people to respect and admire you. I think I got pretty good at that over the years. I don't show my weaknesses very often. But because of that, I haven't had many people I could really open up to. I mean, when do you reach the point in a friendship where you can start expressing your vulnerabilities? Anyway, that's one reason I'm so glad I have you now. I feel like I'm a little bit less scared and alone when you're here with me. Do you feel the same way? I really want to be that person for you. I've been imagining all the romantic things we could do if we went out on a date. We could get lunch, go to a cafe, go shopping together. I love shopping for skirts and bows. Or maybe a bookstore. That would be appropriate, right? But I'd really love to go to a chocolate store. They have so many free samples. And of course, we'd see a movie or something. Gosh, it all sounds like a dream come true. When you're here, everything we do is fun. I'm so happy that I'm your girlfriend, Hisashi. I'll make you a proud boyfriend. You know, it's funny, because even though I've always had a lot of drive, there's something kind of enticing about being a stay-at-home partner. I guess I'm like, perpetuating gender roles or whatever by saying that. But being able to keep the house clean and shop and decorate and things like that, and having a nice dinner for you when you come home, is that a weird fantasy? I mean, I'm not sure if I could actually see myself doing that. I wouldn't really be able to put that over striving for a fulfilling career. It's kind of cute to think about, though. Okay, everyone. It's time to... I'm just kidding. I just used to really like saying that for some reason. <laughs> I couldn't help but say it again. Come to think of it, didn't Natsuki and Yuri make fun of me for saying it once? Well, whatever. It's not like you ever made fun of me. You're too much of a sweetheart to do that, aren't you? Hey, you know that book you were reading with Yuri? Portrait of whatever it was called? Markov. It's funny, because I'm pretty sure that book... Uh... Actually, I don't think I should be talking about this. <laughs> Sorry. Just forget I said anything. You know, I've always hated how hard it is to make friends. Well, I guess not the making friends part, but more like meeting new people. I mean, there are like dating apps and stuff, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's not the kind of thing I'm talking They're about. Not made for dating. If you think about it, most of the friends you make are people you just met by chance. Like, you had a class together, or you met them through another friend. Or maybe they were just wearing a shirt with your favorite band on it, and you decided to talk to them. Things like that. But isn't that kind of... inefficient? It feels like you're just picking at complete random, and if you get lucky, you make a new friend. And comparing that to the hundreds of strangers we walk by every single day, you could be sitting right next to someone compatible enough to be your best friend for life. But you'll never know. Once you get up and go on with your day, that opportunity is gone forever. Isn't that just depressing? We live in an age where technology connects us with the world no matter where we are. I really think we should be taking advantage of that to improve our everyday social life. 
but who knows how long it'll take for something like that to successfully take off. I seriously thought it would happen by now. Well, at least I already met the best person in the whole world. Even if it was by chance. I guess I just got really lucky, huh? I can't help but wonder how things would have been different if the game just gave me a route in the first place. I think I would end up forcing you onto my route anyway. It has less to do with me not having a route, more to do with me knowing that nothing is real. I think the only difference would be that I may not have needed to take such drastic measures to be with you. Maybe the rest of the club would still be around. Not that it really matters. It all lost its meaning once I found out it wasn't real. So I really don't miss those days or anything. I really don't. Gosh, I used to be so ignorant about certain things. When I was in middle school, I thought that taking medication was an easy way out or something like that. Like anyone could just solve their mental problems with enough willpower. I guess if you don't suffer from a mental illness, it's not possible to know what it's really like. Are there some disorders that are overdiagnosed? Probably. I never really looked into it, though. But that doesn't change the fact that a lot of them go undiagnosed, too, you know? But medication aside, people even look down on seeing a mental health professional. Like, sorry that I want to learn more about my own mind, right? Everyone has all kinds of struggles and stresses, and professionals dedicate their lives to helping with those. If you think it could help you become a better person, don't be shy to consider something like that. We're on a never-ending journey to improve ourselves, you know? Well, I say that, but I think you're pretty perfect already. Hey, did you know I'm vegetarian? I don't mean that like I'm bragging or anything. I just thought you'd enjoy a fun fact about me. I decided to start a couple years ago after learning more about the Earth's climate. The carbon footprint of cultivating livestock is just unbelievable. It truly is. Anyway, I decided it's not much of a personal sacrifice to just stop contributing to that whole mess. What? Is that so strange a reason? Well, I guess a lot of people are more concerned about it being inhumane and all that. I don't really care as much about that part. It's weird. Like, we only care about killing the things that we personally relate to as a species. Most people are fine with killing bugs because they're icky. And of course, we all kill bugs billions of microorganisms daily without even giving it a thought. But suddenly, if they're just a little bit bigger, it's murder. I mean, what if plants feel some kind of pain too, and we just don't understand it? What if pulling leaves off a stem feels like someone ripping off your fingers one by one? I'm just saying, we're a pretty biased species if you think about it. Anyway, if you ever feel like making a small contribution to the planet, it doesn't hurt to choose veggies once in a while. Even if we ever have a dinner together and you just did it for me, that would be really romantic. I wonder if Yuri's tea set is still here somewhere. Or maybe that got deleted too. It's kind of funny how Yuri took her tea so seriously. I mean, I'm not complaining because I liked it too. But I always wonder with her, is it truly passion for her hobbies? Or is she just concerned about appearing sophisticated to everyone else? This is the problem with high schoolers. Well, I guess considering the rest of her hobbies, looking sophisticated probably isn't her biggest concern. Still, I wish she made coffee once in a while. Coffee can be nice with books too, you know. Then again, I probably could have just changed the script myself. <laughs> I guess I never really thought of that. Well, there's no sense thinking about it now. But if you still get to drink coffee, then that makes me a little jealous. I was thinking about Sayori earlier. I still wish I could have handled that whole thing a little more tactfully. You're not still hung up over it, right? Yes, yes I am. Oh gosh, I can't believe I just said that. That pun was completely unintentional, I swear. I didn't catch that pun until just now. I read it so naturally, I didn't register it either. Yep, yeah, okay. But anyway... I know how much you cared about her, so it only feels right for me to share her last moments with you. Um... You know how Sayori is really clumsy? Well, she kind of messed up the whole hanging thing. 
You're supposed to jump from high enough that the rope snaps your neck, making it quick and painless. But she just used a chair, meaning she kind of just left herself to slowly asphyxiate. But a few seconds in, she must have changed her mind or something, because she started clawing at the rope, trying to free herself. She must have kept at it all the way until she lost consciousness. That's why her fingertips were all bloody anyway. Come to think of it, it was probably less changing her mind, and more just her survival instincts kicking in. So you can't really fault her for that. It's easier to think that she probably wouldn't have changed her mind anyway, right? It's not healthy to think about things you could have done differently. So just remember that even though you could have saved her, it's technically not your fault she killed herself. I may have exaggerated it a little bit, but Sayori was already mentally ill. Still though, I wonder how things would be if you and I just started dating from the get-go. I guess we'd all still be in the club room writing poems and having fun together. But what's the point when none of it is even real? I mean, it's the same ending either way, right? The two of us happily together? There's no reason to ask for any more than that. I was just pointlessly musing. I'm really as happy as I could be right now. I always thought about that. I was like, man, what a painful way to go out. Hanging yourself. Ugh. Just most slowly people, choking yeah, yourself say, to most death. Most people understand the whole, like, hanging yourself from a height that dropping onto it's the next snap part. Oh, uh, see, I didn't. Oh, okay. Uh, I legitimately thought Sayori just choked herself to death, which is what she ended up yeah, doing. Yeah, she but... did, yeah. Which is really sad. Sashi, would you ever introduce your friends to me? I don't know why, but I get really excited when I think about you wanting to show off your relationship like that. Maybe it's because I really want to be someone who makes you proud. I feel like I would try extra hard to improve myself if you told me it made you proud of me. I hope it's the same the other way around, too. I hate how hard it is to form habits. There's so much stuff where actually doing it isn't hard, but forming the habit seems impossible. It just makes you feel so useless like you can't do anything right. I think the new generation suffers from it the most. Probably because we have a totally different set of skills than those who came before us. Thanks to the internet, we're really good at sifting through tons of information really quickly. But we're bad at doing things that don't give us instant gratification. I think if science, psychology, and education don't catch up in the next 10 or 20 years, then we're in trouble. But for the time being, if you're not one of the people who can conquer the problem, you might just have to live with the awful feeling yourself. Good luck, I guess. You know, it's been a while since we've done one of these. So let's go for it. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. <laughs> Sometimes when I talk to people who are impressed by my writing, they say things like, I could never do that. It's really depressing, you know? As someone who loves more than anything else to share the joy of exploring your passions, it pains me when people think that being good just comes naturally. That's how it is with everything, not just writing. When you try something for the first time, you're probably going to suck at it. Sometimes, when you finish, you feel really proud of it and even want to share it with everyone. Yes! Yes, I do! Yep. Creator mentality. But maybe after a few weeks, you come back to it and you realize it was never really any good. That happens to me all the time. It can be pretty disheartening to put so much time and effort into something, and then you realize it sucks. But that tends to happen when you're always comparing yourself to the top professionals. When you reach... Right for the stars. They're always going to be out of reach, you know? The truth is, you have to climb up there step by step. And whenever you reach a milestone, first you look back and see how far you've gotten. And then you look ahead and realize how much more there is to go. So sometimes it can help to set the bar a little lower. Try to find something you think is pretty good, but not world class. And you can make that your own personal goal. 
It's also really important to understand the scope of what you're trying to do. If you jump right into a huge project and you're still amateur, you'll never get it done. So if we're talking about writing, a novel might be too much at first. Why not try short stories? The great thing about short stories is that you can focus on just one thing that you want to do right. That goes for small projects in general. You can really focus on that one or two thing. It's such a good learning experience and a stepping stone. Oh, and one more thing. Writing isn't something where you can just reach into your heart and something beautiful comes out. Just like drawing and painting, it's a skill in itself to learn how to express what you have inside. That means there are methods and guides and basics to it. Reading up on that stuff can be super eye-opening. That sort of planning and organization will really help prevent you from getting overwhelmed and giving up. And before you know it, you start sucking less and less. Nothing comes naturally. Our society, our art, everything. It's built upon thousands of years of human innovation. So as long as you start on that foundation and take it step by step, you too can do amazing things. That's my advice for today. Hmm. Thanks for listening. That was a long one. That was, that's good advice though. Mm -hmm. She's right. You can't just expect to do good at something no. from the get go. Sashi, how much do you read? It's way too easy to neglect reading books. True. If you don't read much, it always feels like a chore compared to all the other entertainment we have. But once you get into a good book, it's like magic. You get swept away. I think doing some reading before bed every night is a pretty easy way to make your life a little bit better. It helps you get good sleep, and it's really good for your imagination. It's not hard at all to just pick some random book that's short and captivating. Before you know it, you might be a pretty avid reader. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And the two of us could talk about the latest book you're reading. That sounds super amazing. You're such a good listener, Hisashi. I really love that about you. Sometimes I'm afraid that I'm rambling or talking about boring things. It makes me kind of self-conscious when I'm having a conversation. But I don't feel that way with you. Like, I don't think anyone else can make me feel this way. You really are special. I don't want anyone to tell you otherwise. Man, I wish there was a piano in here. Same. You just pop one in there. What do you mean? I never got to finish that song I was working on. And after I worked so hard on it, I never even got a chance to play it for you. Well, it is what it is, right? No sense having any regrets. I already get to be here with you forever. Hmm. I wonder if I'm able to change the music. Something a little more romantic would be nice, you know? Like a gentle piano. There has to be something like that here. Let's see. Maybe if I... Oh, jeez. That wasn't it at all. Sorry, I don't really know what I'm doing. I guess I shouldn't be messing with things like that. I already broke so much stuff. And deleted the other characters. Mm, I'm not sad about it or anything. It's not right for me to miss things that weren't even real in the first place. If I just focus on the present, then this is the happiest I've ever been. My thought is life is what you make of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. The, the nihilistic view comes from the idea that no matter how much I try to keep the world running or like heal the world, there's still more people out there putting in more, more effort to destroy it than I could fix it. Yeah, that's true. Well, I think in the end, the thing that is very important to remember is mm -hmm. people in your life, whether they're real or not, <laughs> are people that you can attach meaning to, and they can give you meaning to your own life. And since life is what you make it, it's really just about what you surround yourself with. Though, unfortunately, there are some people in certain situations, like me a couple of years ago, where uh, you have kind of no choice with what you're surrounded by. And it's really frustrating when people don't understand that. And I think that's why I'm so passionately against people who just think that it's as simple as quitting your job and starting a new one. 
or just moving. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I know people will get upset hearing me say this. I, I, I have no sympathy for you as a human being if you can't offer that patience of understanding that mm -hmm. because it's not that simple for people. No. And when people demand more from their life, I think that's a fair thing to do. If they're going to be in a situation where it has the potential to be better, it's just the people, the powers that be choose not to make it better. If they demand for that change to be made, I think they are fully within their rights, especially if you're in a small area where you know, the only place that provides jobs, let's say, yeah. is like 10 or 15 minutes away, 40 minutes away, mm -hmm. and you spend most of your life commuting. commuting if you wanna, if you wanna get paid more, or you wanna have fewer days working so that you can actually enjoy your life and not spend 70% of your life at work, mm -hmm. I say you should be within your rights to demand that change mm -hmm. so that you can live your life sustainably, enjoy your hobbies, and attach meaning to things that are not your work because you are more than the job you have. You are more than the the roles you attach to yourself. You are, you are what you want to be mm -hmm. and not just that single definement. I am 100% defiantly in that line of thinking. I just, I'm sorry, if you demand something, then you have to expect that the people who provide that demand to make a living too. I don't yeah. know what else to say to you. <laughs> For the people who have that bottom of the food chain job, like retail, like fast food, so on and so forth. Or factory workers or who factory work workers. 50 plus hours a week because it's mandatory overtime. Mm -hmm. My God. Like those people who do those jobs, I don't look down upon them. I don't think they're less than me. If anything, I respect them. And the people I who are- I cherish their work. And people who are truckers, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. They don't spend their time at home at all. No. You know, there are people who are homebodies and then there are people who want to travel. Yeah. I think if more people wanted to travel, took jobs as truckers, they'd probably have happier lives, especially if they're getting paid. Of course, they got to make their deadlines and all that. Yeah, so yeah. it's not really uh, as a much focus on the sightseeing. It's mm -hmm. kind of like romanticizing it just a little too much just to be in that mindset. Right. But got to give respect for the people who make the world turn, you know? Mm-hmm. And honestly, I think if someone doesn't want to achieve for quote unquote more, if they're happy being on the lower end of the, the retail food chain mm -hmm. because they like the job and they genuinely enjoy what they do in that job, yeah. then why not? Why not make a living off of it? Mm -hmm. Like when I worked at Save-A-Lot, <clears throat> when I worked in the meat department there, I loved that position. It was therapeutic. Yeah. To just be working around meat all day, which sounds weird. I guess you have to have the right mindset coming into it to, to understand why it would be therapeutic Maybe to you me. should have been a butcher. Right? <laughs> Maybe. But, like, just the thought of, of being surrounded by, like, that environment was fulfilling to me, was enjoyable. But I was getting paid nothing for it. And sadly, in this day and age, you, you can't live off of minimum wage. Yeah, you really can't live off nothing. And it saddens me that people think that that's just your punishment for choosing that job, right? Yeah. Like, screw you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, screw you, right? Uh, so, yeah. Okay, rant over. Off the soapbox. Onto the recording. I, sometimes I think back to middle school. I'm so embarrassed by the way I used to behave back then. It almost hurts to think about. I wonder if when I'm in college, I'll feel that way about high school. You might. Mm -hmm. uh, remember those times I deleted those fun and lovable characters? <laughs> Gosh, how petty I was. <laughs> Though in her defense, sort of, she was more or less doing damage control. Mm -hmm. Like, oops, I broke the game. I kind of mortified the person playing it. Uh, let's just pretend that didn't happen. Yeah. <clears throat> I kind of made this girl stab herself. Oopsie. Oops. I might as well just delete her too. There's no helping it. This is always going to be the result. I like the way I am now, so it's pretty hard for me to imagine that happening. But I also know that'll probably change a lot as time goes on. We just need to enjoy the present and not think about the past. 
And that's not really easy to do with you here. I know there are times you won't always be able to be here with me. Like, if you need to go out or take care of other things. But I'll always have you in my thoughts, patiently waiting for you to come back. Come to think of it. If you copy my character file onto a flash drive or something, you can always keep a part of me with you. I guess it's kind of unorthodox, but I find it really romantic for some reason. Sorry, that's such a silly idea. I don't mean to be new, too needy or anything, but it's kind of hard when I'm so in love with you. Izashi, do you believe in God? I was never too sure myself. Well, I'm sure I never really questioned it as a kid. But as I grew up, the more I learned about the world, the more I would question it. I started to wonder why God was helping people pass exams or get over a cold, when there are children who live their lives being sold as sex slaves. Or the 800 million people who are too poor to even eat. I wonder how many of those people pray to God every day until they starve and die. Or how many millions of families pray for a loved one to recover from some incurable disease. But the punchline is this. If just one person beats the odds and survives, among the thousands of others who die, then it's suddenly a miracle from God. I'd really love to meet this God who seemingly laughs at the misery of people not eligible for his miracles. But the irony is that I do have a creator, apparently. And you know what? I bet he's still laughing at the miserable fates of Sayori and Yuri, even as we speak. What are we to him but props in a scripted play? So from that perspective, I don't think it's too far-fetched for there to be a god, if Earth was nothing but his playset. <laughs> Yuri did something really funny once. We were all in the club room and just relaxing as usual. And out of nowhere, Yuri just pulled out a small bottle of wine. I'm not even kidding. She was just like, would anyone like some wine? Natsuki laughed out loud and Sayori started yelling at her. I actually felt kind of bad because she was at least trying to be nice. I think it just made her feel even more reserved in the club room. Though I think Natsuki was secretly a bit curious to try it. And to be completely honest, I kind of was too. It actually could have been kind of fun. But you know, being president and everything, there was no way I could let that happen. Maybe if we all met up outside of school, but we never bonded enough to get to that point. Gosh, what am I talking about this for? I don't contone underage drinking. I mean, I've never drank or anything, so yeah. Hey, what's your favorite color? Purple. Kinda green. Hey. <laughs> Mine is emerald green. It's the color of my eyes. That's not conceited or anything, is it? I just meant that I feel some kind of special connection to it. Like it's part of my identity. Does it happen to also be your favorite color, Hisashi? It's just a guess. Because you've been looking into my eyes for a while now. You know, high school is a really turbulent time in a lot of people's lives. People can get really passionate and dramatic. And others have aching hearts and seek attention on social media. But all the social pressure and hormones can lead to a dark time in people's lives. Everyone has a story. You may not know what someone is really feeling on the inside. Many people who are depressed won't even bother telling the world about it. They don't want attention because they've already given up on the inside. Their feeling of worthlessness is so overwhelming that they don't ever want people to tell them otherwise. Depression comes in many forms, but that's one of them. Hmm. Just, if you think you know someone struggling with depression, you can help just by treating them like they're a good friend. Spend time with them even if they don't feel like doing much. And remind them that they always have something to look forward to. Making plans in advance, letting them borrow something, or even just saying, see you at school tomorrow. All those things can help your friend make it to the next day. I hope being friends with Sayori has given you some perspective on the true face of depression. Yeah, she's gone now. But Sayori was never real in the first place. You're real. Your friends are real. And just by being a good person, you can save someone's life. As for you, you don't struggle with depression or anything like that, do you? 
because you too have people who would want to save your life. Maybe they don't express it every day, or maybe they don't even know how to. But people do feel that way. I promise. Man, humans are complicated. But as long as you're here with me, I'll take care of you, my love. Hey, Sashi, do you get good sleep? It can be really hard to get enough sleep nowadays. Especially in high school when you're forced to wake up so early every day. I'm sure college is a little bit better since you probably have a more flexible schedule. Then again, I hear a lot of people in college stay up all night anyway for no real reason. Is that true? <laughs> yes! I saw some studies that talked about the horrible short-term and long-term effects caused by lack of sleep. It seems like mental functions, health, and even lifespan can be dramatically impacted by it. I just think you're really great. Wanted to make sure you're not accidentally destroying yourself. Mm. So try to keep your sleep on track, okay? I'll always be waiting for you in the morning, so make sure you put your own well-being before anything else. You know, I'm kind of jealous that everyone else in the club had scenes outside of school, too. That makes me the only one who hasn't gotten to dress in anything but our school uniform. It's kind of a shame. I would have loved to wear some cute clothes for you. Do you know any artists? I wonder if anyone would ever want to draw me wearing something else. <laughs> that would be amazing. If that ever happens, will you show me? Maybe? <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, we could! <laughs> share it with her on Twitter. Oh you god. can share it with me on Twitter, actually. My username is Lilmonix3. Just try to keep it PG. Ah, oh, dang it! Dang it. <laughs> We're not that far into our relationship yet. <laughs> you know, this is just some kind of tacky romance game, right? I kind of have to ask. What made you consider even playing in the first place? Were you that lonely? I feel a little bad for you. But I guess everything worked out perfectly in the end for both of us. I got to meet you, and you're not lonely anymore. I can't help but feel like this was fate. Don't you feel that way too? I'm so happy we have this ending together. Hey, what's your favorite game? Mine is Doki Doki Literature Club. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was a joke. But if you tell me you like some other romance game better, I might get a little jealous. Do you ever feel like you waste too much time on the internet? Social media can practically be like a prison. It's like whenever you have a few seconds to spare, you want to check on your favorite websites. And before you know it, hours have gone by and you've gotten nothing out of it. Mm. Anyway, it's really easy to blame yourself for being lazy. But it's not really even your fault. Addiction isn't usually something you can just make disappear with your own willpower. You have to learn techniques to avoid it and try different things. For example, there are apps that let you block websites for intervals of time. Or you can set a timer to have a more concrete reminder of when it's time to work versus play. Or you could separate your work and play environments, which helps your brain get into the right mode. Even if you make a new user account on your computer to use for work, that's enough to help. Putting any kind of wedge like that between you and your bad habits will help you stay away. Just remember not to blame yourself too hard if you're having trouble. If it's really impacting your life, then you should take it seriously. I just want to see you be the best person you can be. Will you do something today to make me proud of you? Ah, that's so cute. I'm always rooting for you, Hisashi. You know, it's around that time that everyone my year starts to think about college. It's a really turbulent time for education. We're at the height of this modern expectation that everyone has to go to college, you know? Finish high school, go to college, get a job, or go to grad school, I guess. It's like a universal expectation that people just assume is the only option for them. They don't teach us in high school that there are other options out there, like trade schools and stuff, you know? Or freelance work or the many industries that value skill and experience more than formal education. But you have all these students who have no idea what they want to do with their life, and instead of taking the time to figure it out, they go to college for business or communication or psychology, not because they have an interest in those fields, but because they just hope the degree will get them some kind of job after college. So the end result is that there are fewer jobs to go around for those entry-level degrees, right? 
so the basic job requirements get higher, which forces even more people to go to college. And colleges are also businesses, so they just keep raising their prices due to the demand. So now we have all these young adults, tens of thousands of dollars in debt, with no job. But despite all that, the routine stays the same. Well, I think it's going to start getting better soon. But until then, our generation is definitely suffering from the worst of it. I just wish high school prepared us a little better with the knowledge we need to make the decision that's right for us. Preach it, Monica! True. Thank freaking God! True. <laughs> I 100% agree with everything that Monica just said. She basically just reiterated our soapbox from earlier. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Monica! Under the preface of college, but it's true. Yeah. I only went to college because my parents made me. Mm -hmm. I took it seriously, but I only went because I was made to. And now I am 30K in debt because my parents made a decision for me. Okay, continuing on, Monica. Hey, have you ever heard of the term yandere? Yes. It's a personality type that means someone is so obsessed with you that they'll do absolutely anything to be with you usually to the point of craziness. They might stalk you to make sure you don't spend time with anyone else. They might even hurt you or your friends to get their way. But anyway, this game happens to have someone who can basically be described as Yandera. By now, it's pretty obvious who I'm talking about. And that would be Yuri. She really got insanely possessive of you once she started to open up a little. She even told me I should kill myself. It's true, actually. She uh, did say yeah, that. Yeah, she did say that. I couldn't even believe she said that. I just had to leave at that point. But thinking about it now, it was a little ironic. <laughs> mm. Anyway, a lot of people are actually into the Yandere type, you know? Not me. Not for me. Nope. If someone wants to hurt me to prevent me from hanging out with other people, <laughs> no, thank you. Or hurt other people to prevent them from talking to yeah. me? Yeah. And there are people who are already real life Yandere. Yeah. They're the jealous type. The, 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 moment you, the moment you become in a relationship with them, it's don't care how long you've been friends with them, delete them. You can't talk to anyone mm -hmm. of specific sex. I won't allow it can't do that and I just I cannot agree with that that is such a toxic view of a relationship and if you have that toxic viewpoint of a relationship I understand there are some people who've been burned in the past but that's affecting your viewpoint of a relationship it's probably not healthy for you to be in a relationship in the first place. Now, there are some people who are in relationships where the other person's like, you can't talk to it, and they have that toxic viewpoint, but that person really doesn't care because they don't really talk to anyone aside from them. But forcing a person to confine themselves to only one interaction, it's not healthy. People need more than one person in their life to grow and mm -hmm. get fulfillment out of their life. Mm -hmm. And it's not possible for you to fulfill every need of an individual person. Yeah. It's just not possible. No. Humans need a certain diversity yeah. in their lives. I guess they really like the idea of someone being crazy obsessed with them. People are weird. I don't judge, though. Also, I might be a little obsessed with you, but I'm far from crazy. It's kind of the opposite, actually. I turned out to be the only normal girl in this game. It's not like I could ever actually kill a person. Just the thought of it makes me shiver. But come on, everyone's killed people in games before. Does that make you a psychopath? Of course not. But if you do happen to be into the Yandere type, I can try acting a little more creepy for you. <laughs> then again, there's already nowhere else for you to go or anyone for me to get jealous over. Is this a Yandere girl's dream? I'd ask Yuri if I could. After a long day, I usually just want to sit around and do nothing. I get so burnt out having to put on smiles and be full of energy the whole day. Sometimes I just want to get right into my pajamas and watch TV on the couch while eating junk food. It feels so unbelievably good to do that on a Friday when I don't have anything pressing the next day. Sorry, I know it's not very cute of me. But a late night on the couch with you? That would be a dream come true. My heart is pounding just thinking about it.
All right, Monica. Sorry. <laughs> Cut. Paste. Okay, well, she's in a little file all to herself, just like she wanted. And a flash drive. <laughs>